Welcome to Outboard Motorbike. In the middle of the shot there is our clutch cover, as previously described. And while all that's in place, it's not a bad time to have a look at a, a gear change mechanism. Now, um, having a, a boot handy and a foot peg, if that goes there, we want a gear change about here somewhere. And the easy, sensible way to do that is um, pivoted up here backwards, which um, I think works okay for a linkage to the Harley gearbox, but um, we'll get this out of the way and we'll see. Working our way outwards from the gearbox, you can see that's the original Harley lever, which um, can't really go on that way because the boss and the bolt and everything get in the way of the sprocket. So I welded a suitable piece on the bottom of it. We'll eventually chop that off, but it's handy for the moment. And that's um, that's just got enough clearance there. I've wrapped a bit of old chain around the sprocket so we can see where we are. We're in neutral there. That's second, just clears the chain. That's first, just clears the bracket. Every reason to carry on. Awfully tight widthwise between the sprocket and the um, shear plate. There's just room for this little drop link made of two M6 rod ends joined together to slip in there and uh, we'll do that next. Now we have our little pair of rod ends in place ready to do their job. Moving along down the line the next component is a little lever arm to do that job. And that'll sit on a bit of half inch shaft welded on but that's just use a bolt for now Not like so and this thing needs well into the chassis that's a bit of tube 4130 tube bought out to suit this little Placia DU flanged bush sounds rude when you say it slowly but it's actually quite a handy thing they're self lubricating so I'm um, quite happy to run dry or wet that pops in there that pops in there and that gets welded to the chassis we can put a back to front gear lever on it and then this linkage turns it back to front again so that everything works the right way around with a bit of luck and this little assembly is just a screaming tight scraping tight fit between the back of the shear plate and uh, and the chain but with a machine down bolt we'll fit it in there I think we'll get away with it and while we're playing around here with the gearbox in the frame, I mentioned earlier about tying this face of the gearbox into the frame to stop itself ripping itself out of the frame. Um, here's a little half mil thick, this little aluminium template for what will eventually be a four or five mil thick piece of aluminium. Picks up on those two bolts, ties into the bottom engine mount here and up to the frame there. And so there's two purposes. It, it holds the gearbox into the frame and also the frame's a bit of a sort of square hole here which isn't very nice uh, and it, apply, it creates a shear plate to hold this part of the frame uh, rigid with the, with the front because the load, uh, vertical load uh, from the monoshock and the rear suspension will go through here and up here so it'll make it nice and stiff and also while we're playing around with the frame on the other side, uh, same square hole, but um, there's room around the gearbox to put a little triangular, little round stay, triangulating that square hole a bit that'll help it out enough, I think. And just a little note, if you ever, that's a little bit of sort of 16 mil diameter tube going onto a bit of square 25. If you're ever doing such a thing, don't put it in the middle of the flat panel because it'll pant and crack. Put it over on the edge like that so the, you know, the load can go straight into the stiff part of the tube and it won't crack. Here's our little gear lever pivot tube welded onto the chassis with the DU bush on either end. And that's a half inch bolt. And this little unit gets welded to one end and uh, clack 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 clack. And on this end we need to have some way of locating the removable gear lever to um, clamp on the shaft and not slip. 
Now, to get a torsional attachment between the gear lever and that shaft, if you're a Suzuki or Harley Davidson or whatever, you'd probably put a spline on there. But as a one-off, that's quite expensive and time-consuming and involves a fair bit of specialist tooling. So what I've done is use the skills I learned at the New South Wales Railway Apprentice Training College and how to use a file in 1977 to put an 11mm square on that 12.7mm shaft. And that's to size and square and accurate to within a couple of thou, which is pretty cool. And then by putting a, uh, a square hole in a round bit of tube, which is uh, easily done with a, with a six mil cutter with a little radii on the end in the corners, I think we can make a drive for that, which will work quite well and not cost a fortune. Told you. That's been parted off in the lathe now, so it sits nice and flush. You can probably see what's going on here. And there you have it, ready to weld the gear lever onto. Only a couple of little points there. I cut the, I put the cut there rather than there so it clamps down on the tapers when you put a 6mm bolt through here and obviously um, <laughs> weld the bush on before you do the hacksaw cut. Anyway, that's all good. And here at long last are all the bits and pieces of our gear linkage welded together. That's the original Harley lever with the extension on it, a pair of M6 joints screwed together, a bit Malcolm made, piece welded to the chassis, two DU bushes, the shaft, the uh, clamp bush, with the lever welded on. And it works. And in case you're wondering why there's a big bend in the lever, that's to miss the clutch cover, which it does. Gear lever and linkage done.